G'day guys, and it is a long-awaited update to my Flashpoint tutorial series, and it's not a very big update, it's an unscripted update as well, so if I am a little bit all over the place, I do apologise. Um, sorry for the delay in getting more videos out, I... Oh, well, it's just been work, you know. Real life gets in the way. So, to give a little bit of a quick background on where I am and what I'm doing from here, so when I was doing the previous videos, I was sitting at version 5.3.3, all the way down here. All of these updates have come out, right up to 5.5.1. Da, 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 which I didn't actually touch until this one up the top. Uh, reason being is I did try to jump over to 5.4 when that came out. Had a few issues with um, with working with my printers, and yeah, just nothing wanted to work. So I've rolled back to 5.3, rolled back the latest firmware, they're not even using that, and everything was working fine, so, you know, it's a, you know, a good example of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Which leads on to what this video is truly about, if it ain't, fo if it ain't broke, don't fix it, which is in the supports. So this video is largely going to be, again, IDEX machines. If you've got dual extruders, you know, things like dual color prints or soluble supports, for example, becomes a thing. So this is mostly what we're going to talk about here. Now, previously, we could go into, if I remember correctly, and, you know, I could probably just look at my own video if I wanted to get a bit of a background. Um, you could go into the slicing settings in supports. You could actually choose which extruder the support came out of from memory. Now... Now it's a little bit more challenging. There's no tool tips, there's no explanation. How the hell do you change which nozzle these things are coming out of? If we go into our add support dialog box, support options, whatever you want to call it, on either one of these, yeah, whatever, you might notice a slight change, and that slight change is this little button here. Now, for some of you who have been using the latest updates, it's probably no big news. You've probably figured it out by now. For me, you know, the first time this button popped up, I had no idea what the hell it was doing. And it took me a little bit of figuring out to actually work out what it does, how we use it, and so on and so forth. So, what we're going to do, auto supports, we're going to add some of them. Now, you might notice this button is green. Turn it off. Color changes. Turn it on. Color changes. But what it is now is when it is actually highlighted green, you can actually select supports previously, turn it off, y you can't. The difference is this little button, you know, for my way of describing it, is making the supports their own model almost, their, their own little structures. At this point, you can actually select them, and you can right click them, and you can choose which extruder to print with. So, a little bit more convoluted in that, you know, if you're not up to date on all of your keyboard functions and shortcuts and all the rest of it, you could be sitting here going around one by one by one, adding support structures everywhere. The other alternative, and I can't tell you what it is on a Mac because I haven't used a Mac in, I don't know, forever, um, Control A. Now we've selected all of them, now we can, you know, do the rest of it. Right click, choose left extruder, go back, start slicing, you know, check your daddy dars in here, whatever you want it to be. And obviously hit slicing and off you go. No, I don't want a wall, go away, because it's just an example, I'm not going to print it. <coughs> and if you wanted to make sure that it is going to do what it says it does, back it down to a particular layer, and you can actually see that the little nozzle icon here. This is green. If we go back a few steps, it turns yellow. So yellow is the right extruder and green is the left. And that's how we know that it is going to do what we want to. Now, a few other updates is now we can see G-code. Again, if you've been using this longer than I have, keep in mind, my version, my previous version, when I made all my videos, didn't have this. But now you can actually see it, you can you know, see the position of the nozzle at any particular stage for this set of instructions, so on and so forth. Um, you know, besides that, it's still got all that sort of stuff up in here. I think they've had, a, you know, changed a few colours um, and how, how, you know, how they display things so you can customise it. 
but mostly this video is just about the support. So, um, until there's, you know, massive changes to the way Flash Print operates, there probably won't be any more updates on the videos. I might end up doing something else. Um, look, if you'd like a video on a particular subject within Flash Print or 3D printing in general that I can do for you, by all means, drop a suggestion in the comments and I'm more than happy to see if I can make that happen. Um, I guess in the meantime, thank you for all of those who have subscribed to my channel, even though it's incredibly boring. I do appreciate the, uh, the love and support that you have given me for this little project. So um, a big thank you to all of you. And uh, till next time.